Right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jennifer Hawks Bland, and I am the CEO at New York Bio. We're thrilled to welcome to welcome you to another one of our best practices series. We have a very brand new partnership with Carta, and so we're thrilled to have them here to discuss Equity 101 with you today. Um, this is um, exciting for us in multiple ways. One is because definitely, as New York is an early stage ecosystem, we we certainly have lots of discussions, and we need lots of help with our um, equity and cap table um, information, but also it's important because this new partnership will allow New York Bio member companies um, to have a special access to discounts um, on Carta products. So it's a win-win for everyone. And I am thrilled to have Kate Tolman and Michael Moser here today um, to go through their Equity 101 presentation with you. You'll have lots of times, uh, lots of time for Q and A in the Q&A box in the chat, very similar to our Tuesday morning breakfast, just throw it up there and they'll be able to get to your questions um, as they can throughout the discussion today. And then we'll obviously follow up with you, um, each of you on links to how to access Carta and the New York Bio platform. So without any further ado, I'll turn it over to Kate to introduce herself and Carta, thanks. Thanks, Jennifer. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. We've got a few slides to present today. Great. So Jennifer, thanks again uh, for the opportunity to, for uh, Carta to partner with New York Bio. We are thrilled. Uh, New York is near and dear to our hearts in a lot of ways because Carta, while it was, we like to say it was born and started in San Francisco, um, it's really growing up as a financial services company in New York. So uh, it's our second largest location and again, near and dear to our hearts as a company. Um, Mike and I are here today to talk to you about Cap Table Basics, Cap Table 101, which really we find is the foundation of a company getting started um, and really putting you on the best foot forward uh, in, term of, in terms of your ownership record. So we're going to go through a number of different key terms, reasons why the Cap Table is so critical and important, and different use cases for the cap table structure. Um, we're going to get started with a bit of an intro on ourselves as well as Carta as a platform. So hi everyone, my name is Kate. Um, I am a former commercial banker, I would say recovering uh, in certain audiences. Uh, healthcare analyst and consultant has really been my background. Um, I joined Carta at the early part of this year to really formalize our healthcare and life science practice. Um, it's very much been a passion of mine for years and how I've spent the better part of my career focused on, I would say, the intersection of healthcare innovation and healthcare economics. So uh, prior to Carta, I was at SVB for 12 years. Um, and in my spare time, when I am not at work, uh, I love to spend time with my two kiddos who are very incredibly active and keep me on my toes. I am based in the Boston area um, and we run our healthcare practice um, in a national level. So I'll turn it over to Mike. Hi, everyone. Um, I'd like to thank Jennifer and Mary and the entire team at New York Bio again. Thank you so much for being great partners and allowing us to have this opportunity today. I'm a former investment banker and valuation advisor. Um, I joined Carta a little over two years ago. I've seen a tremendous growth at Carta. Um, when I joined, we were worth uh, $400 million. Today, we have a $3.1 billion valuation. Uh, lead investors such as Andreessen Horowitz and Lightspeed Ventures. I lead business development and partnerships in the tri-state area mostly working with law firms, accelerators, and VCs, and organizations like New York Bio. I live in New Jersey, also known as the Garden State, and I um, have two wonderful daughters, both under the age of three, so I am busy as well. So a little bit about Carta, brief history lesson. Um, founded in 2012 as eShares, our novel approach to the private marketplace was issuing electronic stock certificates. That's what hence our name, eShares. Um, historically, private companies issued stock certificates via paper, and had law firms or CFOs internally record those transactions in Excel. We thought a better approach would be to do it electronically and have the cap table actually act as a byproduct of all those transactions. So it always was that single source of truth. There was no uh, multiple copies of cap tables, Excel spreadsheets floating around. If you issue something on Carta, the cap table automatically updated. Um, there was full transparency for the founders, um, people on the legal team, as well as the C-suite. Um, since then, we've grown up a little bit and we rebranded ourselves in late 2017 as Carta, since we do much more than just issue electronic securities. One of the hooks for our companies and that people generally benefit greatly from is the 409A valuation. It refers to an internal revenue code, 409A. What it basically is, is a third-party valuation to determine the fair market value of your common stock. 
which sets the strike price for issuing options. So Carta also acts as a compliance tool as well. Um, on our platform, you need to have a, a 409A in good standing to issue those options. So in addition to issuing electronic securities, cap table management, we also do 409A evaluations, as well as some other tools as your company continues to grow, such as scenario modeling, and we offer liquidity as well. So a quick card at a glance, we have over 18,000 companies on our platform and 1 million equity holders. An equity holder is someone that has received equity through the, through the platform. Um, so we really are a network company. We are reaching many folks and investors throughout the VC community. We also have $1 trillion in assets with value companies on our platform. Uh, these are some of the VC firms that use us as well as some of the prominent companies. I'm really looking forward to hopefully um, having some of the founders today you know, grow up on Carta and uh, be one of these logos referenceable in the future. Okay, I'm gonna jump into a little bit of our specialized focus on the healthcare and life science ecosystem. Um, so as we mentioned, we really formalized our practice uh, for this audience in the earlier part of this year. Uh, about 10% of our customer population identifies as healthcare and life science companies. And the reason we felt that it was important to have a dedicated focused team is we understand that equity issuance can be a bit nuanced in life sciences in comparison to counterparts in the tech industry. And so we have a, a dedicated practice, again, a team members that focus on sales, customer relations, for a 9A valuation analyst that really understand this industry and have subject matter expertise to support companies as they grow. It allows us to be proactive and understand some of the challenges that you might have in your growth journey and be thoughtful, trusted partners and advisors to you along the way. So we really work with companies from the time that they are first incorporated and formed all the way throughout their inflection points through financial path and growth, um, including liquidity. Uh, and so as Mike mentioned on the prior slide, liquidity platform and offering is a strong part of what we do, preparing you for what's next and your company. Uh, and certainly for our life science companies with the way the public markets have been, IPO readiness is a big part of what we do, again, to prepare companies for what's next in that fundraising cycle. So we like to say our, our companies never graduate away from us at Carta, um, and it's our mission to align with you and give you all the support that you need as you grow. All right, so that's a little bit about Carta. We find it's important for you to know who we are, what we do, and why we're here. Um, and now we're really going to get into the overall uh, bulk of the presentation, which is, again, talking to you about our Equity 101 series, cap table understandings, and best practices. So our agenda for today, we're gonna to go over what a cap table is, why it's important, um, and why it's critically important to you uh, keep this in your forefront as you're growing, um, why investors look at your cap table and what they're gonna be looking for, key terms that you should be aware of as you're thinking about constructing the cap table or working through this with any of your partners, uh, what makes a good cap table, what makes a bad cap table, and we'll have a few examples for you. Uh, tools and resources that are available to you as you start to think about constructing your cap table. Um, and we'd encourage questions. So please feel free to put your questions, as Jennifer mentioned, into the chat box. Mike and I will be monitoring those. We have time allotted towards the end of the session for Q&A. We'll go through and answer those um, and we'll keep an eye on those throughout uh, the presentation. Thanks, Kate. So what's the importance of cap tables for startups? So cap table is short for capitalization table. Uh, overall structure of the company, who owns what? I always make the analogy uh, when you own a home or an apartment, uh, your spouse or partner, if you own a 50-50, that's a cap table right there. If you own it by yourself, also a cap table. So a cap table can be as small as one person or as many as thousands of folks on the cap table. But it just shows the history of who owns what, when they owned it, what price they own it at, as well as it helps you tr keep track of all the securities. You know, as companies grow, um, there are usually different types of equity instruments that they can incentivize employees and advisors with, as well as different instruments for investors. So the cap table is your startup story. It's your investable story. Um, it's very important to have that accurate at all times. So through working with, you know, over 18,000 private companies, uh, we've learned that a lot of companies have cap table entropy. And what that basically means is that the cap table is correct at the recent round of financing, and then they forget about it. They're very busy you know, running their company, building new products, coming through with you know, some healthcare and life sciences breakthroughs, and the cap table sort of is that admin function that you forget about, um, which is very obvious because you're busy working on other things. At the same time, 
if you don't keep track of it, there's entropy. I mean, cap table can sort of grow. You make promises to certain folks of how much equity you're going to give them, but you don't actually record it. Um, so your cap table entropies, and then it's actually a costly exercise and very frustrating exercise before your next financing to work with your law firm to clean it up. So Carta is able to minimize that entropy by keeping all the records accurate all the time using that day one mentality. We've also learned that, you know, as you raise capital, it's very important to understand the, the key terms, rights, and preferences of that capital. Um, not, all, not all equity is the same, not all capital is the same. Um, if you're not keenly aware of that, you could be giving up a lot of the company that you founded that you worked hard for, and that's called dilution. So Carta also has tools that help you model out um, what that capital will, will look like on the cap table we have right now to see if it makes sense and, and it's right for that stage and size of your company. Um, as well as it helps you, you know, push back if, if the VC investors are being too aggressive. Um, you're able to model out and figure out what the right amount of dilution is based on the equity investment. So why should you care about this? These are kind of six reasons that we think are really important. I'm gonna just key in on two of them, number two and number four. Um, it helps you land key talent. Um, you know, in this marketplace today, I don't think a highly qualified person would accept a job with just base salary. I think to attract key talent, you base salary plus equity. Um, it makes you connected to the company. Um, it makes you invested in the company. And it makes you feel like you've, you've made a difference as well as you receive the upside if the company continues to do well. And number four, a clean cap table will help accelerate VC financings as well as M&A transactions, IPO due diligence. Um, once again, you know, you're busy working on your company. You don't want right before a round of financing, you know, timing is everything, you know, you don't want to have to scramble to get this cap table right. You want to be able to look professional um, and speak to your investors with the right cap table, right information all the time at, at a minute's notice. All right, so we're going to go over a few key terms that are in the cap table. Um, and again, as Mike mentioned, it's really important that, you keep, that these are top of mind throughout your growth for a few different reasons. And we'll go over inflection points um, that can challenge these terms or where these terms will come to your benefit. Um, and just an overall understanding, again, of what the ownership representation and balance is for your company, the ownership stack, as we call it. And so what that means for founders, what that means for employees, what that means for investors, and really anyone that has uh, an ownership stake in your company. So here are a few key terms that we find that founders um, should be made aware of as they, are, again, are constructing a cap table or getting prepared to really move through and facilitate that cap, cap table with others that are important um, in surrounding their company as partners. So just a few things to differentiate. Your cap table will be constructed of, of two different types of share class or stock options. Those will be broken down into common stock and preferred stock. So where a cap table will have overall ownership representation, not just by share type or class of equity, it will also determine um, a bit of chronological order for what that payout structure will look like in the event of liquidity. And that's really how you wanna think about common versus preferred. So common stock is typically issued to founders and employees. Preferred stock, however, is if you take on institutional investors where that dilution will occur that Mike mentioned, that is typically going in the form of preferred stock. And so as you'll see here, what that typically means is that will be paid back first in the event of an acquisition. And there are key uh, liquidity measurements that are placed against that. And so it's important that you're aware of that as you grow and there's a balance between what the preferred stock means, again, to the overall ownership and dilution structure versus the common stock itself. There are also two different terms that really follow along what your company is worth. Because again, the cap table is going to show you who has a stake in your company, what terms they get paid out in that stake, and then overall the value of your company as it's fluid and moves through different periods of financing. Clearly your value should grow, again, as these um, additional rounds of financing come into place. Um, and things that you'll wanna pay attention to are the differenti differentiation between pre-money valuation and post-money valuation. These are calculation methodologies. It's really for the purpose of pricing those shares for both investors and employees. And so you'll wanna pay attention to these again as your value grows and as additional financing rounds come into play. Some of this will be in addition to a 409A valuation, which again is, is a service that Carta provides um, that I will pull back to the cap table, will intimately speak to the cap table to understand what your fair market value is at that point in time and as you're growing. 
So a bit more on pre-money valuation and evaluation terms. So price per share is typically pre-money valuation divided by the fully diluted cap. So it's really the overall numbers of shares. And again, this is just prior to a round of financing, but will grow with each and every additional follow-on financing round. Um, your option pool should be allocated. This is actually the reserve of stock options you have to issue to employees. And so this will be something that, again, you'll want to pay attention to in the very early innings as you're constructing to understand how you want to bring on talent and at what capacity you want to bring that talent on. Particularly for early stage life science companies, something that we always recommend is being mindful of really retaining that key talent throughout your growth. So if you are bringing on key scientific hires, for example, you want that, that key scientific hire to stay with you throughout your growth, um, it's you're important that you're mindful of what you have to issue them within your option pool. Uh, and again, as that continues to grow throughout inflection points and financing values, bringing on additional talent and what you will have for option issuance. So fully diluted capitalization, we mentioned this a bit prior, um, but all of the shares that have been are reasonably likely to be issued. Um, so anything that remains outstanding, anything that's issued under outstanding options and the remaining option pool. So this is again, terms that you should take into consideration as you grow. Other key terms to be aware of, again, and these are all related and spin off of the cap table, uh, your foreign ID valuation. So as we mentioned, cap table structure tells you a bit about the overall ownership stack and what your company is worth, what it is valued. Uh, so these are assigned to the common stock um, and it's reliance upon an independent report. And this is used to price employee option grants. We often get asked for life science companies, um, even if you're not thinking about at this point in time, taking on dilutive funding, you have non-dilutive funding in the form of grants, um, in the form of potential partnership dollars, depending upon again, where you are in your growth. It's in critically important that you still have an understanding of what your value as a company is, uh, because again, this really impacts what the price is associated to the shares that you are issuing to your employees. It gives an overall record of what their options are worth. Ownership percentage probably goes without saying, but given an equity holder owns relative to the fully diluted capitalization. So uh, what overall that percentage is of ownership um, once it is fully diluted. Notes and safes, um, convertible securities, these often will come into play. Certainly within our industry, convertible notes are very common um, as one of the first equity instruments that we will see enter into a cap table and really one of those first terms of agreement for investors to um, put money behind your company. Um, so this will convert into preferred stock. You'll wanna pay attention to the terms that are attached to that convertible note and what that, um, what that equation will look like when it kicks up into the next round or when it actually converts. Uh, and again, that will be something that's clearly articulated um, in your cap table. Okay, what if you have no plans to take on dilutive capital? Do you still need a cap table? Um, yes, you absolutely do. And as we mentioned previously, the biggest reason is because this is overall what your employees are looking at um, in terms of understanding their value of what they own in the company. And so it's incredibly important that you pay mind and attention to this um, and value your company for, for those employee options. So your cap table can be used for a variety of reasons. Um, again, you can clarify your ownership relative to your business partners. So it, oftentimes in an early stage company, if there is a co-founder equation where one, one founder is going to be the scientific founder, one is going to be the CEO, it's critically important that you have a very open discussion about what the ownership position is early on. And again, this will be clearly articulated in your cap table, which stands as a source of record. Um, as Mike mentioned, this really incentivizes current and prospective employees, advisors, um, and outside board members. And so this makes sure that everyone is really in that ship, rowing together, working together towards a common goal. Um, you can preserve optionality and your outlook on investors may change. Where you are currently in your cycle, if you're very early on, you may not be thinking about taking on dilutive capital again. You may not be thinking about bringing in institutional investors. You may have non-dilutive funding underneath you in terms of grants. Um, but as you grow and you understand your capital constraints and cash preservation is, is first and foremost in our industry, 
you're going to get a, a sense of whether you want to bring on institutional investors. Um, and so it's important that you own that ability. You really, what Mike and I like to say is the, the founders have the reins in their hands to determine that. And the cap table can be an instrument that clearly illuminates that for you. And you can understand what that dilution will look like to you, to your employee base, and overall, again, to the investors that you're bringing on board. And critically important is your path to liquidity. And so ensuring that you are always ready for an M&A opportunity should that arise. Um, in our industry, I think we can you know, all agree that that is really sight lines for most companies as they grow. Um, and so again, it's critically important. In an M&A event, one of the major pieces of information that is reviewed and looked at is your cap structure. And so it's an, again, an understanding what that ownership looks like and essentially the overall health and economics of that company as it's been growing. Okay, so your cap table is stands as a source of truth. This is something that we mentioned earlier is one of our value propositions. We feel as though overall, um, everyone who is involved with a company should have the ability to understand where the, the ownership record is at that point in time in that given moment. Um, and so it's critically important uh, for investors to be able to see this as they're determining and doing diligence into whether or not they want to make an investment into a company, um, as well as for founders, again, to be able to control that story and understand what position they would like investors to take. Um, we always say good diligence happens on both sides of the table, right? Founders should have the ability to diligence their investors. Investors will have the ability to diligence their founders and their companies. Um, and so this is one of those key pieces of really that, that overall packet of diligence information and somewhat of negotiation um, of discussion between the company. We feel it puts your best foot forward uh, while you're going through that process. And so oftentimes companies will start their cap table construction, have a good understanding of any equity instruments, those convertible notes, for example, that may have been issued, uh, what has currently been raised to date and potential um, early rounds, friends and family, again, non-dilutive funding, um, and that will all come into equation as part of your diligence with institutional investors. You can house that within a data room, all right on the Carta platform, of course, um, and then facilitate your diligence with your cap table in mind. Um, it's, it's one of the critical, again, core components of that early stage economic phase. And as you can see here, we work very closely with investors um, and it's always good to understand what they're looking for and what they find to be value in the cap table construction and understand that it stands as a source of truth. If there are any partnership turnover at any point in time. And so if you decide to work with law firm partners or controlled finance individuals and, and those seats may change, um, this really stands as a consistent record uh, throughout your company's growth um, that again, both the company and investor will continue to, to view and look. All right, so in our, um, again, in working with 18,000 companies uh, and over 400 plus investors in the, in the Carta network, uh, we've really gained a keen understanding of what we think investors look for uh, when they look at cap table and when they go through a diligence process. Um, and so there's a few examples here of what we found will, will really be those key points. Um, we really feel that critically important is the ownership percentage of the founders and the key em employees. How vested are they? Investors will often look at this for, again, overall understanding. Um, one of the biggest asset constraints, certainly in the life sciences industry, is human capital and human talent and what you have, again, for key scientific hires in a life science company. And so investors are keen to understand that. I think it's, you know, goes without saying that they're looking at not only what you are developing as an asset and as IP, what the construction of your company might look like, what your business plan is, but and, and as well as equally important, who is the team behind this, right? Who's driving this innovation? And so this first bullet point really speaks to that. Your investors want to know that the key employees that you are hiring, in, in addition to yourself as a founder, that you are being compensated the right way and that you are going to be retained throughout the company's growth because of that compensation. So um, it's a big point that investors look for. Are you doing what's necessary to keep that talent and grow that talent? I think the other um, key and, and critical point here is, is probably uh, number five, which who are the other investors in this company and, and what do they hold? Um, particularly as you're thinking about growing, potentially you are raising a seed round, uh, you are 
potentially raising a larger Series A. It's important for new investors that are coming in, uh, especially an investor that, that is thinking about leading that round to understand what the prior economic financial cycles have been for you um, and, and who is involved in your company, again, what position they have, and overall what that ownership representation will be uh, for that new investor as they come in uh, and what the overall impact on dilution will be. And we wanted to just share with you a sample cap table. These materials, of course, will be sent out after our webinar session to everyone who's registered. So you can take a look at this and really zero in on it. Um, but again, this overall will illuminate a lot of the key terms that we've mentioned. You'll see here a few different rounds of financing and growth for this company in this sample um, cap table. And you'll also be able to see well, where the fully diluted position are, uh, the outstanding ownership percentage, um, and really just a visual of this, this discussion kind of coming to life. So who is responsible for doing all this work? Well, the answer changes. Um, as your company grows, it changes. If you're two founders working in a lab, you're, you're doing it yourself. Um, as you raise more financing, you're probably hiring maybe an outsourced CFO uh, to help you or outside counsel. Um, they're gonna be involved as well. I always recommend you being equally involved uh, when you raise your Series C+, plus, you're going to have a CFO, a larger C-suite, and if you're a mature company, general counsel and CFO, but always as a founder, you should be involved. Uh, Carta allows as many legal admin users on, the, on, on your company account as possible, uh, as needed, so therefore, you always have this uh, transparency. So I hear a lot from founders. We're taking a lean approach. How can we keep maintenance costs low? And I, we totally appreciate that. You know, every dollar counts. Every penny counts. Um, so we just say, stay on top of it. You know, um, we really do believe, um, just like maintenance on a car, maintenance on a house. Um, if you put the time and effort in upfront, it, it's going to save you tenfold or more at the end. So definitely stay on top of it. Keep that day one approach, be organized, always enter the data right away. Don't let entropy happen. Um, I would check it once a month or every, every, you know, every so often, um, always be timely with new grants. When you, when they have a new hire, if you told someone in the hiring process, you're going to issue them grants, do it in a timely fashion. And you know, you use your cap table and hopefully Carta as, as um, a tool to be offensive and you know, be on the offense, plan ahead. And hopefully this will help you with future rounds of financing and MA transactions. So let's look at some examples of both, um, I guess in quotes, good and, and bad cap tables. So we think this is not the greatest cap table. Um, it, it's great if you're found, founding a company and you're at a bar and you're sitting down with your founder and you have this conversation, it's cool to have this. Uh, maybe sort of like a barbershop, they, they put up a dollar for the first dollar they you know, sold. You can put this in, you know, in your office, but um, we definitely would recommend avoiding documentation on napkin. Um, having it legally documented through Carta, through your legal counsel is the way to go. So option one is build from scratch. You can open up Excel and uh, build, it from, build it from scratch. Uh, the con is it's kind of hard. To, if you've never built one before, it's tough to build one in Excel. Um, it's tough to collaborate. Uh, many times we see founders having one version of the cap table. We see the investors having one version of the cap table. And we also see the law firm having one version of the cap table. So which one is correct? Um, it's really tough to keep track of all the changes. Um, and basically the audit trail, who's making those changes as well. So this is what a, a BYOS, I guess, bring your own spreadsheet would look like. Uh, these, are, these are real examples. Um, you know, if you're an Excel wizard, go right ahead, but uh, you know, I'd have a challenge doing this and you know, formatting it so nicely like this as well. So option two, uh, cap table software. The pros are it's, it's super easy to keep up to date. Like I mentioned earlier, the novel approach that Carter took was building the cap table through the issuances. So in essence, we're a transactional platform. Every time you issue an equity award, the cap table is a byproduct of that. Uh, the con obviously, it, it does cost some money. You know, With our great partnership, we, we hope um, we're able to help every company here um, we also want to, you know, make sure everyone is aware that, you know, a little money up front does save you a lot of uh, frustration and, and money down the road. I think that the other critical point here is we understand that this, this should not be what really takes your time as you're growing, right? And particularly as a founding team early on that has your hands in multiple parts of the business. On the life sciences side, critically important when you're in the lab and you're working with your team and, and oftentimes in the very early innings, being one of the lead scientists yourself and, and building on that innovation at real time, 
the last thing that you want to do is really have to take time out to understand um, the record management portion of your cap table. Um, again, we say that it's important to keep this in mind um, and to be on top of it, um, but having partners and resources to help you in that along the journey will save you some of that time so that you can be putting it to better use um, and to be in the lab where, where you should uh, be spending your time. And to piggyback on that as well, you know, lawyers also really appreciate our software. Uh, you're hiring lawyers at you know expensive rates up to a thousand dollars per hour to provide you legal advice and counsel, strategic advice, not to keep track of spreadsheets. Um, so if you're able to use their software, um, they appreciate it because they can spend more time on the stuff you're paying them for versus admin stuff, and there's no fighting over the bill as well. So this is an example of um, what a, what Carta would look like if your if your company was named Neatly. It's a demo company there. We have this toolbar. Uh, one of the toolbars is capitalization. This is a view of by share class. So this is what your cap table will look like. Um, so for example, the common, it looks like there's 25 certificates. You can actually drill into that and see each certificate. We're an SEC registered transfer agent. So these are legally binding stock certificates and you'll actually drill into it, see your logo on the stock certificate, see audit trail of who issued it, who signed it, who accepted it, when they all did that, as well as investing schedules and legends. Um, we also have this neat toolbar. All cap tables are built from scratch on Carta. So you can actually you know, go back and forth at any point in time if you want to audit. If you want to see what happened on December 31st, 2019, you can easily do that versus trying to save multiple uh, spreadsheets with different dates. This is super easy to do. It's really important to keep on top of that to really reduce any errors that will occur throughout the cap table. Um, I think we, we showed this on a prior slide, um, but when we start to work with companies uh, beyond formation stage, when we take a company in and work with them, say at the time that they have received uh, uh, some invested capital allocation, potentially a seed or series A round, about 90% of the cap tables that we take a look at uh, um, as an employee base at Carta are incorrect or inaccurate. And and some of that is the time stamping that Mike mentioned. It's various versions of this floating around. Um, and other times, uh, again, it's just the lack of source of truth on what's been issued um, and what's going to be issued to potential employees. And so we find that having this again in one centralized platform uh, really facilitates a number of conversations that need to occur and understanding uh, overall of what that growth potential can be. You can also slice the data by stakeholders as well. So you can see what venture firms, what individuals are holding on, um, and also what classes of equity they're holding. Um, seed, preferred, convertible notes, et cetera, fully diluted basis. Um, we're not opposed to you know, exporting it either. Everything is exportable here. Um, if, if you, you know, it's a screenshot obviously, but if you drill in capitalization, you can go to reporting. And there are a gazillion ways to slice and dice this data that are all for different you know, reporting needs that you may have. Um, so this, this is super powerful. All right, so a few tips for building your cap table. Um, we recommend that you think about this in a, a day one mentality, as you mentioned, but also working backwards. So we want to give you the, the key overall pieces of information that you would need should you want to start to build this. Um, and again, our hope is that we can help you and be a resource to you. Um, and part of that is, again, just understanding what those necessary components are as you think about the construction. So finalize your understanding with co-founders. We can't emphasize this enough. That is really critical. And, and kind of first and foremost is having a discussion with who has been their really first minds around the table and understanding what those terms are going to be for yourself as well as your founding team. Um, so again, that's, that is always first and foremost to us, step number one. Um, and then it's about really documenting that final understanding and moving that in uh, to an overall construction and stack of ownership. So things that you will need to be mindful of and that you'll want to work on as you're putting this together, your um, certificate of incorporation, and um, articles of organization, all of these essentially are your, are your incorporation documents, um, your stock purchase agreements, stock plan and the option pool documentation that we talked about. What is the design overall for her employee capacity and what you will issue to them? Um, any convertibles that you've issued, so safes or convertible notes, convertible notes really being the most common in our industry in life sciences, and understanding that those need to be represented within the overall ownership structure. Again, for some of that um, convertible structure we've talked about, really to kick up or step up into future rounds of equity um, and what the liquidation preferences are around those. So key things to be mindful of. 
They're often uh, alongside of this could be warrant structures that you should be mindful of, and those will be represented in the cap table as well. Um, those can be fairly common in our industry, whether it's looked at again in terms of a bridge financing or a venture debt offering. Warrants will be a component of that. Be mindful of that as you grow, and that will be something again that's reflected on the cap table and any relevant board actions. So written consents where your board has agreed to certain terms um, beyond uh, what's stated in your, your incorporation documents. So any amendments uh, that are key to, again, the equity stack would be reflected here. And it's good to have that uh, in understanding as you're building. All right, so we're coming up on our recap portion here. So these are the things that a good, tap, a good cap table can illuminate for you. Um, be intentional about your growth and the distribution of equity. Um, again, modeling out what you think dilution will look like overall to your company, uh, as well as your employee base. And so you're giving them the best value that they can uh, and being part of your team. Uh, giving an employee an, an understanding of what their equity incentives are, what their true ownership position is in your company um, in real time and as they grow uh, and choose to stay with you throughout their, fully obviously throughout their vesting period and beyond. Um, a better alignment with your company's legal counsel. And so again, that source of truth really matters here. Everyone is on, on the same page as to what is happening to the company uh, throughout the ownership position um, and consistent to your investors as well. Um, so again, forming a strong relationship um, and an economic position with your investors, understanding that you are going to be focused on your scientific innovation and your business plan should grow alongside of you. Um, and this is one of the ways in which that can do, this can happen and give your investors that peace of mind and security um, in working with you. Okay, on the other side of the equation, issues to be mindful of. So if you issue any stock or securities to investors, make sure that you're capturing these instruments and characterizing them properly. And so that warrant example that we just provided is a good one here. Um, oftentimes we'll work with founders where potentially a convertible note or warrant is not illuminated from the, from the outset in the cap table. Um, and so these are again, are critical pieces of information to have at your fingertips as you're constructing. It builds the economic foundation of your company. So always have that day one mentality, be diligent and share wisely. And so you have the ability to, again, use this as a diligence tool for future fundraising, um, use that to your advantage with investors. It's putting best foot forward. Um, honestly, use it to your advantage with employees. Uh, having a company, you know, a founding team and a management team, a company that's aware of what equity positions can do for their employees and can speak to that um, as they're looking to hire that talent can often make the difference in that process. Um, and so being really transparent to the extent that you feel comfortable with that employee base, we find is critical. Um, and certainly there are tools to support you and in, in thinking about that from a compensation structure. Model and plan ahead. Um, so again, for the benefit of your company's financial growth, thinking about what dilution you would like to take on, can you offset this with non-dilutive funding? Your cap table will often illuminate that for you. Think of this as you grow as a core part of your budget. Um, and so where you are growing financially as alongside of where you're growing scientifically um, and putting those two equations together to understand just how much uh, cash preservation is key for you as you grow. Um, it's also used to the benefit of the employees and investors, as we mentioned. So modeling out growth for all of these key asset classes. And don't go it alone. There are resources to help manage equity along the way. Obviously, Carta is one of those. Um, and as Mike mentioned, our partnership will support you in your efforts. Um, and we hope that you'll reach out and learn more about our platform. But there are many resources that are available to you. Again, should not be spending your time necessarily on this part of the business planning. Once you get to that critical point of growth, um, have this scale with you um, and have resources that support you in that scale. All right, we're gonna move into the Q&A session um, and open it up for questions. We will check the chat box. We're also just, before we go over Q&A, we're gonna put up our contact information so that you can reach out to us. We also, um, as mentioned, are working with Mary and Jennifer to send slides out, uh, our materials from today to all those who have registered. So you will receive those um, in your inbox. 
And embedded within this presentation, we have a few resources for you that I just want to illuminate and then we'll come back to the question, the question portion. So uh, it's a little bit about our offering that we have in place with New York Bio and so ways that you can reach out and work with Carta. Um, overall, uh, we embedded a few uh, screenshots of our platform as you saw as we moved through the presentation, but wanted to include information about 409A valuations. We again went over those a bit quickly today and we're happy to talk about that more in depth. We find that this is one of the uh, critical pieces of a company's growth uh, is understanding again what the value of your company is. Detailed reporting, as Mike mentioned, there are a variety of ways in which you can look at what the ownership structure is coming out of that cap table, what the vesting options, the vesting schedules are for current employees. So we wanted to make you aware that this, again, is, is critical for your growth and oftentimes a, por a portion of what will be your audit and compliance record. Our notes and safe calculator. So we talked about this as one of the first equity instruments that you will potentially utilize. And so within our uh, within our platform, we have a, a calculator that will help you model this out um, and really understand what that will look like if you choose to use that as a, a first equity option. We also have a case study that goes along with that calculator so that you can see this come to life and understand what that impact would be to a, a company with this structure, particularly for the founders, as often dilution will occur to you first. So those are a few of the resources. We'll, as mentioned, go back to our Q&A session and we'll uh, take a look at the chat here and see if we have any questions. Bear with me one second while I get to the Q&A portion. And Mary, I may need your help to see this. I know, Kate, we had two questions. I answered both of them. They're about um, the slides and recordings uh, will be available. I don't see any other questions though. Okay. And this is Jennifer, i.e. Voice of God. <laughs> um, and we will also post, um, we'll post this um, information, the, the replay to our website um, and our YouTube channel so that um, folks can easily find it um, when they have time or if they, if they want to go back and look in more detail. Oh, we just got a question as well. Uh, does your product allow sharing with investors or external parties? Yes. Yes, it does. Um, you know, we encourage that. There are different levels of cap table access. So the, the default is typically no access except for your own holdings. Um, we like to think of that, you know, those 1 million stakeholders at Carta, it's sort of like you can log in. It's, it's almost like a private version of Schwab or Fidelity. You can see all your holdings, but then you can request different levels of access from summary access all the way up to detailed cap, cap table access. And you, as, as the founder, as legal admin on the account, you will have the discretion to do that. It's important to know too that you can change that throughout your growth. And so you may find early on that you really wanna keep a lot of that structure um, as the team is small and potentially again, not thinking about bringing on um, investors at the early onset, you can keep that and maintain that, um, that structure of transparency. Uh, and then as you grow again, permission investors, um, particularly for certain diligence situations where partnerships are a part of the equation. That's often a lot of the discussion that we'll have, again, is around if an equity component is going to be part of a partnership or commercial licensing arrangement, um, this is another way in which you would use cap table structure to eliminate uh, and be transparent about sharing in that environment. And as yep. Mike mentioned, you can do yep. that within our platform, within our, our deal room and data room uh, for for really ha having that within one consistent system and being able to permission that. Sorry, Mike, go ahead. No, you took the words out of my mouth. I was gonna say, <laughs> we, all, we also have a data room as well, um, which is helpful. Clearly we do this quite often together for finishing sentences. <laughs> Another question, do you have functionality then around options or taxes? We do, um, that's a great question. And so we will have, uh, we, we do have resources to support tax allocation for employees, particularly if exercising is coming into the equation as you grow. Uh, we, will, uh, per, we will supply that information directly to the employee as well as the administrator on the account at that level. Oftentimes, again, as you grow, this will change as, as we represented in slides. So that could be your general counsel, that could be your CFO if you have that functionality in place. If you have an outside contract finance individual, 
again, they will have from the administrator management component of what the tax implications should be, what you should be aware of as a company, particularly as it relates to stock option expensing. That's a core component of what you may need to do. Uh, and there are tax implications. And then for the employee, again, all within the system, they will view, they can exercise within the system and they can then view uh, the tax documentation that goes along with that exercise. Another question, can I use my CPA to maintain cap table, pros and cons? Absolutely. Um, any trusted advisor of yours, whether it be the CPA, outsource CFO or legal counsel, um, you will be able to grant them access and they can control it. Um, we, you know, we always recommend, we have something called lawyer in the loop. We really recommend, you know, as you issue securities, the lawyers also get the alerts to make sure, you know, what you're doing is, is in line with the legal documents. We're not replacing lawyers. We're not replacing CPAs. We're a software tool that makes your jobs easier. And as we mentioned before, reduces costs to you overall in working with those partners. And so where we know cash preservation, again, is first and foremost uh, for early stage companies, but particularly for life science companies throughout your growth, um, we really feel as though our platform, uh, we are a value add partner in that way where you can preserve your equity dollars um, and put it to better use. Additional questions? I'm flying blind, Mike, I'm sorry. I can't No, no, <laughs> no more questions. Um, don't be shy, uh, let us know, or you can always you know, call or email us. Um, now that the election is over, I'll start answering my phone again, no more robocalls. So um, please, please call. <laughs> Almost over, I guess I should say. Yeah, don't, don't speak too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, at least if you're in New Jersey, you're not, you're not in a potential recount situation. That's uh, correct. So um, thank you both. Um, this was fantastic. I learned a lot. I know our audience did. Um, so New York Bio member companies and members of our community, feel free to reach out to Kate or Mike directly, or you can reach out to us as well and we can connect the dots for you. Um, so thank you. Um, thank you to Carta for being um, this is a beginning of a great partnership. Thank you to Kate and Mike today for sharing their expertise. And we look forward to connecting with you. One final question, if you don't mind, Jennifer. Um, yeah. It says, what's the ideal point for a new company to start working with you? When does your product no longer make sense in the company's growth cycle? So the ideal point, I'm biased, um, from day one, uh, two founders in a lab. Um, have that conversation. Uh, join our free program, Carter Launch. Once you have 25 stakeholders, $1 million raised, it's free. Um, so we would encourage you to build that cap table from day one. It's very easy to do with two founders. It should take 15 minutes. Um, we do see companies that are later stage that join us. Maybe they're a series B company and have over hundred stakeholders. Also very happy to help you. It just the onboarding phase takes a little longer because we are doing that audited process. We want to make sure the cap table is correct and we'll catch mistakes. So the earlier you get on, the easier it is. Just like anything in life, the earlier you do it, the easier it is. Um, second part of the question, no longer makes sense. Um, maybe I'll let Kate answer that question there. I truly think never. Um, as we mentioned before, uh, we we really designed our platform and, and system and certainly the way in which we're thinking, I'm going to be biased here on the life sciences side, given that's my call to arms, but the way in which we're supporting companies in this industry, we want you to never graduate away from our product. Um, we can you know, talk to you about a, a real case example, um, one that we're very proud of and a company that we've worked with now uh, for, for almost two years um, and really throughout their growth and inflection. And so we started to work with a company in their later stage um, of being actually a public company, Immunomedics. Uh, and we supported them um, by really looking at what their public equity management plan was going to be. Again, understanding that they were still working through their clinical process and working with key scientific hires. And so in equity, we, we helped facilitate and put an equity plan in place for them. Um, throughout their growth, even as a public company, they were utilizing Carta, again, uh, to look at overall what uh, that option pool would be for, for their employees. They were growing clinically alongside of that. And as I'm sure many on this line recognize, um, Immunomedics had a very, a, two very key events this year uh, with FDA approval on the, signed, on the clinical side, um, as well as an M&A event. And so the facilitation of having that record management in place and that compliance in place, um, again, becomes a component of what's next for them and that liquidity path. So I am biased, but I think that it's never really outside of the realms of when you will need this type of diligence and this type of record management. Um, and we want to be here to support you throughout that journey. One more question. 
is this only meant for US companies? What about Canadian or European based companies? The concept is obviously the same, but perhaps not all your modules will work for non US companies. Great question. Um, it's meant for all companies. Um, in the US, we act as a SEC registered transfer agent. So we are the, the, the agent of record. Um, in Canada and other European countries, um, we're not able to do that. Um, you have to follow the, the local state, uh, not local state, but local um, and uh, country laws there. But still can use the platform to share uh, transparency with your investors, keep track of the cap table, just cannot act as the SEC registered transfer agent. Great questions. Another question. What about incorporation? Um, maybe some more context, Brett? I'm sorry. If the, is the, if the potentially the question is, it, does incorporation happen within our platform, Link? Yes, he followed up saying, are there tools within the system to enable that? Go ahead, Kate. So the incorporation physically would not happen necessarily within Carta. Um, again, as Mike mentioned previously, we work alongside of law firm partners very closely. Um, and so if you're, if you are, have signed with counsel or working with counsel to incorporate your company, again, this would be a, a tool and solution um, that we would uh, facilitate um, in conjunction with that process. There are tools in existence um, in the ecosystem where you can incorporate very easily. Um, and, and again, Carta would be a supplemental resource alongside of you there. It's not something that we currently do within our platform now with the caveat of we are always growing and looking at ways to innovate. This has certainly come up as discussion as one of the potential future growth areas for Carta is understanding what that incorporation process could look like um, really from, from start to finish. And despite having already wrapped up, well, well, <laughs> and we still had more questions, which is great. People just weren't typing fast enough. <laughs> um, if uh, this is also a good point to remind um, our participants about the New York Bio Fellows Program. So New York Bio has a fellows program for early stage life science companies, fewer than seven employees and less than five billion in funding. So clearly, um, it, we've talked a lot about early stage and getting started and the best practices. Um, I would argue that, you know, joining New York Bio is a, that's a free membership, um, provides you with access um, to lots of discounts, including discounts as you grow on um, Carta and other, um, other of our partners. So just throw that out there. Great. No more questions, Dom. Thank you again, Jennifer and Mary and everyone that attended today. I really appreciate it.